Well, hello, friends. Uh, welcome to our question and answer program, I'd Like to Know. Uh, we're delighted that you decided to join us today for our program. Uh, I just want to reiterate that uh, it's important for you to send us your questions. I'm going to give you the address, the electronic address, tv at sumtv.org. Once again, tv at sumtv.org. Uh, we crave your questions because we do the research and uh, then we do everything possible to answer the question on the air. Uh, I want to also uh, mention that many times the questions are not answered immediately because we have so many questions that come in that we put them in order uh, to answer them according to the order in which they came in. Uh, so I have with me uh, Pastor David Salazar, who is in charge of our Spanish work, but he's a um, jack of all trades and a master of all. <laughs> that old pastor. <laughs> and uh, so thank you for joining us. And uh, we want to have a word of prayer. We always okay. pray before we begin the program. Uh, so would you please, please pray for us? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come before your throne of grace and for giving us the confidence that we can come boldly before you to ask according to your will. And Lord, it is your will to bestow upon us, your children, the understanding of your word, and you have promised that the Holy Spirit can come to those that ask. And we, so we ask humbly that you will send the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us so that we may be able to share from your word an answer that will bring people closer to you. And I Amen. pray all of these in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have a very hot potato question to start out with today. Yes. You might as well start out on the right foot, right? <laughs> right, indeed. <laughs> uh, so what is the question that somebody has sent us? All right, we have a question, and it's an interesting question. It says the following. It's a tough question. He actually uh, uh, agrees with that, and I think has uh, several parts. But the question is this. Um, <clears throat> in the region where, he, where this individual is, the local Spanish conference has been pushing for worldly progressive agenda. It started with music, then women pastors. They are circling these women pastors to get the local churches used to it. Same tactics as the world. Recently, several churches have now also adopted female elders. It's hard to find a church that stays true to the word of God nowadays. I also live paycheck to paycheck, but stay true to my tithe. How can I give my tithe without funding this political agenda? The only seems to go contrary to the Word of God. Some pastors say this is God's problem. Let Him handle it, and that we should give blindly. If this is the case, do we also give when local churches impose the Sunday law? How is one justified but not the other? So, as you said, Pastor, this is a hot potato. Uh, it's a hard question. It has a lot of things, a lot of parts, and I think we should start breaking it down, you know, uh, with, by parts. I think the first question he has is with the music uh, or the celebration of that of type of adoration that we are having in churches. And so what can we say about that, Pastor? And then we'll continue from there. Well, first of all, open apostasy never happens overnight. Mm -hmm. It begins with things that appear to be small and insignificant, then it goes on to things that are more significant, and it ends up, like uh, this individual says, what happens if a local church imposes a Sunday law? Yeah. Uh, but it starts out with other things where we, uh, where we are not faithful to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, he mentions music. Uh, there is no doubt whatsoever that um, Satan has softened up mm -hmm. many of our churches by introducing worldly music. Right. The fact is that music styles such as rock, disco, um, rap, uh, you know, all of these different styles of music that have come in since the beginning of the 20th century, uh, those styles of music were prepared for worldly music. They were never prepared for church music. They were prepared for worldly music. So, uh, they say, well, you know, if you attach holy words to that music, then it sanctifies the music itself. But that's not the case because Ellen White says that music itself mm -hmm. has an effect upon our physiology and upon our minds. Right. Not only the lyrics, 
but also the music. She says that music, certain kinds of music, can make young people not desire Christ. Mm -hmm. And that supposedly is, is religious music. Right. So uh, the devil, he knows that he's not going to be able to convince the church to start keeping Sunday as his first step. Of course not. So for, he'll, he'll go to music, he'll say, well, you know, that's a cultural thing. And then he'll go to the ordination of women. Well, you know, that's a cultural thing. And then, uh, you know, he takes it in steps mm -hmm. until eventually there is open apostasy and you never discerned it because it's like the frog in the kettle right. that adapts to its environment and it ends up being cooked yeah. <laughs> inadvertently. And so the devil never works overnight. Mm -hmm. He works long range yeah. because he knows that if he can lead the church step by step away from the word, mm -hmm. the result will be open apostasy at the end. And pastor, that's the key that you mentioned, leading us away from the word of God, leading us in practices, in uh, concepts, in even ideas that are slowly but surely step or leading us in a direction that con is contrary to scriptures. And so with this music that these individuals mentioning, unfortunately we have seen this very powerful movement around the world that has invited or has brought worldly music to our sanctuaries, to our churches. And sadly that creates, is the beginning or one of the early stages of leaders in a direction that goes contrary to God. And now the second part is, you mentioned there, the concept of women pastors. Now, he mentions that there has been these, uh, you know, female elders elected. And I know this is uh, something that is not necessarily a pastor yet, but is, is being, has been pushed in many places around the world to be uh, okay with the concept of uh, electing elders, women elders to the office. Now, let's expound a little bit on this. Why is this also a situation that is, is slowly but surely leading us in a direction contrary to the scriptures? Well, you know, uh, if I could just make another remark about music before we transition okay. to this. Um, in 1900, there was a very famous camp meeting that took place in Muncie, Indiana, the Indiana yeah. camp meeting. Yeah. Uh, the, the conference uh, personnel and the pa many of the pastors have embraced a theology which is totally contrary to Scripture, holy flesh. Mm -hmm. The idea that, uh, you know, when you're converted, you ha suddenly have holy flesh. Well, Ellen White corrected the theological idea. She said, no, we won't have holy flesh until this uh, corruptible is transformed into incorruption at the second coming of Christ. Um, but accompanying that theology was a music style. Mm -hmm. And in Selective Messages, Volume 2, pages uh, 30, uh, I think it's 35 to 45, yeah. Ellen White took serious issue with the music, mm -hmm. with the theology as well, but with the music. Right. Now, at that time, there was no jazz. <laughs> right. There was no rock. There was no disco. There was none of these uh, styles of music that have come into the church these days. And yet she, she condemned the use of that music, mm -hmm. which was more like uh, marches by John Philip Sousa mm -hmm. uh, at that time. It was the style of worship of the, of the uh, um, what do you call it? The um, evangelical. Uh, well, it was actually the style music of the, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the, the organization. But anyway, it was a style of music that we would consider tame these days. Of course. Compared Old to the music school. that is being introduced <laughs> yeah. into the church today. By the way, it's the Salvation Army. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not one of the more, more famous uh, denominations, but it was their style of music. In fact, I've written an entire article mm. on that particular camp meeting, and also I address it in my book, Worship at Satan's Throne, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know an extremely important issue, Absolutely. the issue of music, because it bypasses the... Uh, the locations of reason in your mind and goes directly to your emotions. Correct. Um, so, so, you know, you can't say that any kind of music that comes into the church is all right. Um, now, back to the issue of the ordination of women pastors. Yeah. It's contrary to Scripture. The Bible says that the elder, and we use the same passage for ordinations of pastors, needs to be the husband of one wife. Now, is that clear enough that, uh, that the elder needs to be male and needs to be husband of one wife? Of course it's clear. 
But then they say, well, that's cultural, you know, that uh, was from that time. That was a patriarchal society. All kinds of arguments are used to overturn the says. clear, explicit mm -hmm. meaning of the text. And, uh, and so that's another place where we give a little in an area that we don't consider to be particularly theologically important. But that leads to another step and to another step until eventually you're, you're disobeying God's will in many large areas and you don't even notice it because you become accustomed to culture. And, and this is actually something that we can see before our eyes. If you actually look at a lot of the individuals and those who have embraced the concept, you know, even, even not only in our denomination, but in other denominations, who have embraced the concept of ordaining pastors, disregarding the scriptures, I mean women pastors disregarding the scriptures, you can see that their path is eventually disregarded even more and more solid scripture because it, you have to start interpreting the Bible with your, I don't know, with a, with a progressive concept of thinking or a secular concept of thinking where you start interpreting scriptures according to what you think it has to say, not what the Bible really says. So it, it's, just, it's just natural for you to get to the next stage of apostasy. Yeah, the bottom line is that women's ordination did not come into the Adventist church because our scholars said, well, let's sit down and see what the Bible has to say about the ordination of women. Uh, th they did that. But really, the origins of it is the equality movement mm -hmm. in society, in culture. Right. And so it came to the point where we said, you know, we're considered odd because, you know, culture says that men and women not only are equal as persons, but they have equal roles. Uh, and so, you know, the church needs to do something about this. And so there was, uh, you know, a, a movement that began in the church to try to adapt to culture. Right. And in some places, the same thing has happened with gay marriage. Right. There are Adventist churches that are very uh, lean, very supportive to the idea of gay marriage. Uh, and that was the next step after women's ordination. And the scary part is, as this person mentions, will this eventually lead to some churches embracing, adopt, Sunday, embracing Sunday as a day of worship? You know, that would be the end of the process. And that's where Satan is moving towards. Yes. You know, these preliminary things, although they're moral and they involve, involve biblical principles and spiritual prophecy principles, are only the first stage mm -hmm. of Satan trying to get the church adapted to smaller things right. uh, so that the, the church will be unfaithful in larger things. things. Jesus said, he who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. He who is unfaithful in little will be unfaithful in much. And uh, that has proven true throughout the course of the history of the Christian church. And we have seen, sadly, these experiences. There is evidence of churches who were once Adventists, who were once part of their denomination, who have come to the conclusion that they need to embrace Sunday worship to keep themselves in a relevance with the community. And of course, by doing that, you know, forsaking our doctrines as, as a whole. So it, it's not just something that could happen. We've seen happen in a couple of experiences or cases in, around the world. So we know that this is something happening now. Pastor, his question also comes to this important part. What about tithing? You know, I think he does mention the concept of tithing. As he says, uh, you know, are we to uh, continue to give tithing to this, you know, I guess church or my local church if they continue with this political agenda? And will I have to continue to give tithing even when they, con you, know, con you know, continue into the Sunday law? So uh, what can we say about that? Because I think there's a question that he needs to be addressed or answered as well. The bottom line is that other People's unfaithfulness does not justify our unfaithfulness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the bottom line is that, uh, you know, many times people are tempted to say, you know, my tithe is going to a conference that is promoting all of these, uh, this worldly music and is uh, worldly entertainment and things like that. And they say in good conscience, I cannot return my tithe. Uh, in my local church, to a conference that has embraced that ideology. Yeah. Uh, Ellen White has some, uh, some very interesting statements. Yeah. Uh, and maybe I can read um, a couple of them. 
Uh, yeah. One of, uh, do you have those there? I have one, Pastor, okay. and, and you know, it's important to answer him because he's saying, are we supposed to give it blindly? And I think that is not to give blindly, but I'll, I'll let her read and then maybe comment on that. He says, some have been, this, this is actually from um, Testimonies, Volume 9, page 249. Mm -hmm. It says, some have been dissatisfied and have said, I will no longer pay my tithe, for I have no confidence in the way things are managed at the heart of the work. But will you rob God because you think the management of the work is not right? Make your complaint plainly and openly in the right spirit to the proper ones. Send in your petitions for things to be adjusted and set in order, but do not withdraw from the work of God and prove unfaithful because others are not doing right. So I think this is an important counsel. You know, she says three things, I mean, to do, you know. First of all, if you see things not done, run, run, done properly in your local church or conference, you know, you are to make your complaint plainly, openly, in the right spirit, and to, to the, the right proper people. people, right people. You do that, but that does not mean that you withhold your tithes. You are to continue to give your tithes. So this idea of giving blindly is, is not really what he's saying, you know. So you, we are to let our leaders know and let make it open, proper, in the right spirit to the right people. And then, but we are to continue supporting the church in spite, or, or the local church, you know, in spite of their mismanagement, if you will. You know, we yeah. have that advice, we are to continue. So this is what I think, you know, can help. Yeah, one, one of the problems is, uh, in the church, is that people keep quiet. Mm. The members keep quiet. They don't protest. Yeah. You know, and uh, Ellen White's statement here is uh, very clear. She says, make your, play, your complaint plainly and openly. Mm -hmm. There's principles here. In the right spirit to the proper ones. In this case, if this is a conference philosophy that is allowing things to happen in the church, in the churches, then you need to go to the conference. Mm -hmm. And you need to talk to the conference administrators. You know, if they don't listen, or pay attention, you've done your duty. Yeah. You've spoken up. Right. Uh, and if there's nothing more that you can do, you need to pray that the Lord will set things right mm -hmm. in His way and in His time. Right. And sometimes God's methods are pretty drastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there's another statement here uh, from uh, Ellen White. This is Manuscript 3, 1890. There's a whole uh, historical context to this. Yeah. It has to do with a constituency meeting in the Michigan Conference in August of 1890, uh, mm -hmm. where they were having grave problems. Ellen White mentions that uh, ministers were dishonest, licentious, doing little proper labor, bringing the work down, and had no burden for souls. Yes. <laughs> That's the this, this, case of the ministry. Yeah of the Michigan Conference at that time. And she stated that those ministers who failed to reform should be deprived of their license or mm. credentials. Yeah. Otherwise, the conference that has sanctioned the labors of these men will share their guilt. So in other words, there's something to say about the conference not doing anything about it. Yeah. But then Ellen White also wrote uh, in Manuscript 3, you, have been with, you who have been withholding your means from the cause of God, Read the book of Malachi and see what is spoken there in regard to tithes and offerings. Cannot you see that it is not best under any circumstances mm -hmm. to withhold your tithes and offerings because you are not in harmony with everything that your brethren do? Mm -hmm. The tithes and offerings are not the property of any man, but are to be used in doing a certain work for God. Unworthy ministers may receive some of the means thus raised, but dare anyone, because of this, withhold from the treasury and brave the curse of God? Hmm. I dare not, Ellen White hmm. says, I pay my tithe gladly and freely, saying, as did David, of thine own have, I, have we given thee. Mm -hmm. A selfish withholding from God will tend to poverty in our own souls. Wow. Act your part, my brethren and sisters. God loves you, and he stands at the helm. Now, here comes the key portion. You see, the, the conference is guilty if it doesn't do anything about it. Right. 
and the church member is guilty if they don't continue returning their tithe. Uh, she says this at the end of this quotation, If the conference business is not managed according to the order of the Lord, that is the sin of the erring one, the sin of the conference in other words. Mm. The Lord will not hold you responsible for it mm -hmm. if you do what you can to correct the evil, that's speaking up, but do not commit sin yourselves by withholding from the Lord His own property. And so uh, Ellen White uh, rebukes the yeah. conference and she also rebukes the member who does not speak up because things are not being done in the church as they should be done. And Pastor, that is probably the, you know, the, the answer, the right way to go about this situation, that we are called to stand for truth, but speak it in the right way, in the right spirit, with the right people, and at the same time without us falling into sin by withholding the tithe and the offering that the Lord has, you know, told us to give, to return, return to Him. And so, you know, I think that now in the event that said individual is seen or is in a church that is embracing even Sunday law or something like that, you know, in that situation that would probably become total apostasy for that, in that, that church and the congregation. And that, at that time, such a person would have to leave. I mean, that, that would church, not be reasonable. That church would be Babylon. Yeah. Yeah, because that. one of the one of the aspects of the wine of Babylon is uh, the Sunday, right? Uh, worship on Sunday. So, uh, you know that would be that would be the final step: open apostasy against God. And then you would have to wonder whether returning your tithes to a church like that uh, it would would be productive, because in that, you would be supporting right apostasy. Apostasy, full apostasy. So, in, in that scenario, which is not even has happened, at least not in any collective way, maybe individual churches that we mentioned, there have been examples of individual churches following that pattern, but, uh, and the conference has this fellowship, those churches, so it's not like they, you know, they belong in the conference. So we have seen that there's not that stage of apostasy yet, and so we have to not try to act upon something that could maybe happen, you know, and thinking is already here. So we have to just remember that we are at a stage where there is apostasy, unfortunately, I mean, that's not something that is, should be a surprise, mm -hmm. but there's not open or it's not complete process in the church, and so it still is God's church, and because of that, we have to be faithful to what the council has been given to us in, re in remaining faithful in returning tithes and offerings, but also in doing our part to let those individuals that are in charge know in a good and right spirit what they're doing, you know, that need to be adjusted and yeah. changed. And, uh, you know, yeah, the example of Israel is very appropriate here. Um, you know, they step by step by step uh, were led away from God's truth. And the, the, eventually uh, the cup was full mm -hmm. and they, they went to Babylonian captivity. Uh, so, you know, the Adventist church has taken certain steps which are worrying, uh, but the church is not Babylon. Ellen right. White makes that very, very clear. Right. Uh, neither the church has gone beyond the point of no return. Uh, that's why we need to speak up and we need to make sure that, uh, that the church remains on the road that God wants it to be, on the straight and narrow. And, and the Lord has raised up people, individuals, even ministries such as ours to um, help people to stand in the truth and the Word of God and be able to be lights in their churches, in their conferences, to help them you know, keep our faith and the faith of God, the faith of Christ alive and, and, and express and share the gospel, the good news of salvation to the world. Yes. Well, uh, we hope that this discussion has been helpful uh, in clarifying some issues. The bottom line is, let's not be unfaithful Amen. because there are churches and conferences that are unfaithful. Yeah. God is going to set things right. Yes. And many times the measures will be drastic. Mm. Uh, so let's stay on course. Let's Amen. be individually faithful. Let's speak up. And to the conferences uh, in the world, make sure that you follow God's will uh, in everything. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Hope to see you next time.